Services Climate and Energy Conference Committee back to order. Uh, members, thank you for your patience. Uh, uh, we're making uh, progress and uh, we're going to be uh, doing our last policy uh, portions now uh, with some clarifying uh, amendments, the last environment policy portions. I want to be clear, the last environment for policy portions. Uh, so Senator Herr. Mr. Chair, I have here um, an amendment. Uh, okay, they're being handed out, so. Yep, it's been handed out to you, I, you know, and, and I'd like to uh, uh, put, offer the A99 amendment. Uh, it, clear, it give language and direction to MO Ashboard and also to District Energy, and perhaps Council can explain further about the language. Okay. And Senator Herr moves the A99 amendment um, when all members have received it and it's distributed. Um, and this was agreed to with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. Yeah, I will correct that. the change when he makes the motion. Ready to know? Ms. Taylor, if you could describe the A99 amendment. Mr. Chair and members, the A99 um, is some language that the PCA requested and what it does is it amends a, a previous law to remove reference to um, ex the exclusion of a subsidy for the district energy agreement. And you'll see that language on line 3.9 and 3.10 of the amendment. It also um, has some additional language uh, in paragraph F on 3.15 through 3.19. And if people want more description, I would defer to the agency. Representative Jordan. Mr. Chair and members, I reviewed the A99 amendment and I would urge its approval. Would the MPCA would like to comment on, or just a thumbs up? That I could, thumbs up. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. <laughs> Senator Hurt. Mr. Chair, I have another amendment. Uh, the the A103. Senator Hur moves the A103 amendment. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Chair and members, the A103 amendment is a modified version of some house language that allowed St. Louis County to use their environmental trust fund and differently than um, is traditional. This is modified. It clarifies how that 50% would be calculated, um, establishing a minimum amount that would need to remain in the account of $10 million. It would also um, clarify what economic development projects would be, and that would be solar incentives and projects to protect uh, the Lake Superior and other waters in the Great Lakes watershed from PFAS contamination from a landfill. It would also um, require the trust fund to be named after Mary E. Murphy. Uh, so, so members, this would be the St. Louis County Environmental Trust Fund would be renamed the Mary E. Murphy Trust Fund. Representative Jordan. Mr. Chair and members, I reviewed the A3 amendment um, and I am so happy that we are naming this after our wonderful representative, Mary E. Murphy, and I would urge members to vote in favor of this amendment. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those nay, ayes have it, motion's adopted. Senator Hurt. Mr. Chair, I have the A104 amendment, and uh, as uh, council read, I'd like to incorporate the, the change of the word Newport. I think uh, the correct spelling is uh, Lower case P and uh, no space. Ms. Taylor, Senator Herr moves and incorporates a change. 
Mr. Chair and members, the A104 amendment would replace the current INI appropriation in Met Council with this language, which would appropriate 2.75 million um, for INI projects in the city of Newport, with the correction. Representative Jordan. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have reviewed the A104 amendment, and I would urge members to approve it. And for the record, I conferred with uh, Judge Schnettman with Metropolitan Council. This is not adding a new line item. It's clarifying the one that was approved, and they would prefer this language. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion is adopted. Uh, Members, we've just received uh, the final spreadsheets for environment, uh, so we are going to recess so we can go through those uh, and check for one final check for accuracy. We hope to come back when that is done, which will take the time of going through that one more time. So I anticipate uh, not being very long going through those, uh, the spreadsheet. So with that, we are in recess. has been posted. Um, before we uh, go to a motion, I just want to make sure we've, we had completed the policy items for environment. I want to direct nonpartisan staff to review those provisions, make any technical corrections as needed. Senator Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, and I also want to thank you as well and our conference member, as well as our agency uh, to c that come together and make sure that we have consensus on this. I know that um, many have spent long hours, especially our council, after you know our members are done, the researcher and the council still went further to the back room and make sure, crunch the numbers so that our budget are balanced. So, you know, I want especially thanks Mr. Miller and Mr. Stanley, and then our researcher uh, for putting extra hour uh, beside you and I, and, and uh, you know, my RCA as well. So we finally come to an agreement, and Mr. Chair, I want to move uh, to adapt the environment natural resource uh, budget as agreed upon. Senator Herr moves the spreadsheet, the Environmental Natural Resources Finance Budget. It's a spreadsheet dated 5-12-2023, 12.07 p.m. And Mr. Hagemeyer is going to walk through the line items. Mr. Hagemeyer. Mr. Chair, I'll probably split off some time with Mr. Mueller but as well. And but Mr. I'll, Mueller. I'll, I'll start it. Um, the chair reference which spreadsheet we're looking at, this might look a little different from the other copy we had because this has all the agency totals now built into it as well. Starting on the front page, um, this is just a lot of the total calculations for different funds of um, the various funds. I'll mention the change items though. On line five is the change item for the transfer to the Metropolitan Landfill Contingency Action Trust account. There's one-time money of $27,397,000 going into that account for the repayment. On line six, you'll see a change item for the lottery and lieu distribution change. It's a little over $11 million in the current biennium and $11.4 million in the tails. And I'll show you later in the bill how much the percentage change and where the allocations go. On line uh, 11, you'll see a general fund FY23 amount that there's a cancellation and then reappropriation of some funds. So the uh, helps make the, it's how the target works. So there's a Total appropriations of one billion five million four hundred and twenty-eight thousand out of the general fund, offset by the cancellations of two point two million to hit the target of one billion three million one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, which is six hundred and seventy million over base. The tails is just under ninety million dollars over base. 
That's the ch all the change items on the first page. If you go to page two, we can start going through the pollution control agency. And then uh, again, on 49 through line 70 are just agency totals for the various funds and the type of appropriation. Starting on line 75 is the maintain current service levels for the agency. And then you'll see there's 1.55 million out of the general fund and then on line 77 it's 12 million out of the environmental fund, 8 million out of the remediation fund, uh, and then there's offsetting petro fund revenue and expenditure for the um, operating adjustment as well of 4.2 million, and then the state government special revenue is 25,000. So the total operating adjustment for the pollution control agency is 22,411,000 in the current biennium and just under 26 million in the tails. And this is at the governor's recommended amount. Uh, starting on line 85 is the first general fund change other than the operating adjustment. The general fund request for waters program is funded at 5.44 million. And then I should also mention the after you have the conference committee columns for 24 and 25, you'll see the change from either the governor's rec, the house position, or the senate position. So you can see how they, house and senate had allocated from this as well. On line 86 is the resilient communities grants and technical assistance program of $100 million. On line 88, there's $2 million for the St. Louis County landfill for PFAS runoff. On line 89 is the city of Fergus Falls Lake Alice water project for 75,000. Line 90 is Rice County French Lake Water Project for 150000 And on line 91 is Ramsey County Round Lake Water Project for $75,000. And those are all one-time appropriations. On line 92 is the Green Step Cities for $380,000 one time. On line 93 is Innovative Solutions for Managing Pollutants at uh, $19,400,000. And then going down to line 96 is waste prevention and reduction grants and loans of 25,880,000. There's a carve out for the Coda Energy Wood Dehydrator Grant of $3 million. And then on 90, line 98 is the St. Paul Cogeneration Facility Grants of $16,562,000. Uh, on line 100 is a technical assistance contractor for tribal governments at $4 million. On line 101 is the industrial facility air toxic and, uh, and criteria air emissions reduction grants of $6.4 million. On line 102 is PFAS source reduction grants at $4.42 million. On line 103 is a $2 million increase to the county feedlot and SSTS program. On line 104, the climate pathways analysis is funded at $500,000. And again, all these are one time, so I'll mention if there are tails for anything. Um, there's on line 105 is climate resources for environmental review at $320,000. On line 106 is drinking water protection and PFAS response at $25 million. On line 107 is environmental automa automation modernization at $30 million. On line 108 is technical assistance for environmental review at $760,000. On line 109 is $80,000 for air compliance equipment maintenance. Line 110 is accelerated pollution prevention at small businesses of $1.86 million. On line 111 is an update to the capital assistance program at $17,000. On line 113 is plastic testing and protocols for $500,000. On line 117 is a Swan Protection Act get the lead out program at $1 million. On line 118 is the air emissions permits modified, the public meeting requirements of $420,000. And then there's a couple of things here where you're gonna see uh, revenue, revenue and expenditures kicking in fiscal year 27, and this is one of the items, and I'll show you that later. On line 119 is the community air monitoring grants at $5 million. On line 120 is odor management at 500,000, and this is a non-growing appropriation. On line 121 is PFAS and firefighting foam, um, biomonitoring protocols and biomonitoring for $500,000. On line 123 and 124 are appropriations for, well, 123 is the cumulative impacts appropriation of $4.9 million, and this is one of the ones we'll have environmental fund kicking in in 27. And line 124 is Metro Air Toxics Emissions Reporting and Rulemaking at 4.66 million. And this is another one where you'll have FY27 <coughs> Environmental Fund Revenue and Expenditures. On line 
128 is the PFAS water quality standards and PFAS rulemaking transfer to health of $155,000. Line 129 is reporting fish kills in public waters of $477,000 and then $14,000 in the tails. On line 130 is the pesticide treated seed requirements and this is a cost for rulemaking I believe it's $175,000. On line 131 is zero waste report for $680,000. On line 133 is $280,000 for the pig's eye area task force. And then the, on line 134 is the solar energy equipment end of life management study at $420,000. The total general fund change items for the pollution control agency is $266.56 million. Um, Going down to 137 is the start of the environmental fund changes. The first change you'll see is on line 139, environmental career pathways at $540,000. Line 140 is enhanced permitting environmental review coordination at $1.4 million. The financial planning analysis, governance, risk, and ma compliance management is $720,000. And line 142 is technical staffing to implement Minnesota PFAS blueprint at $4.1 million. On line 143 is the air appropriation increase of just under $1.5 million. On line 144 is the hazardous waste solid waste management program staffing of $840,000. On line 145 is solid waste permitting program update of $2.24 million. On line 146 is emergency readiness response staffing levels of $840,000. On line 147 is industrial stormwater and SSTS program <coughs> staffing of $1.4 million. On line 148 is county feedlot and SSTS program increase of $442,000. And then on line 149 is increasing data management and data quality capacity of $3.6 million. Uh, on line 150 is the increased PFC monitoring and then this is of $800,000 and that same amount is transferred to the Department of Health. Um, on line 152 is the above ground storage tank program at $840,000. You'll see a line on 153 for cumulative impacts. This was the governor's recommendation, so there's a new line uh, under the agreement. On line 154 is the Minnesota Green Corps investment of $1.3 million. On line 157 is biodegradable and compostable labeling requirements of $35,000, the first biennium, 136 in the tails. And then... I guess I missed one of the line above that was 155 was the air emissions permits modified. This is the public meeting requirements and this is where you see the tails kicking in FY27 of $140,000. The next change is on 160, the, oh, on 159 is the cumulative impacts proposal. This has the tails appropriation starting in FY27 of $2.5 million and it's offset by fees. On 160 is the Metro Air Toxics Emissions Reporting and Rulemaking. This is the other component of the general fund. It kicks in in 27 and is offset by fees. Uh, 161 is the PFAS and certain products prohibited of 2.278 million in the first biennium and 2.23 million in the second biennium. And then you'll see a carve out of uh, three to 400 grand uh, per year that goes to health. Going to the next page. The last item under the environmental fund is the lead and cadmium in children's products for $150,000 per year starting in FY25. In total, there's 35.3 million, 35 .3 million of new environmental fund appropriations. Under 167 is a remediation fund. There's three appropriations, the contaminated site management at $2.8 million, the PFAS manufacturer fee task force at $50,000, and the petroleum tank release cleanup report at $76,000. Um, there's a couple of statutory changes on line 174 and 175 that were proposed by the governor and they're included here for the Uniform Tools for Brownfields program and the Chloride Training Fee Authority. Going down to line 189 is the revenue transfer section to track the changes there. The first two are the change for that Uniform Tools for Brownfields program. There's an increase of the transfer from the environmental fund to the remediation fund of five million the first year and then two million each year thereafter. The chloride training fee authority is the 800,000 and that associates with that other appropriation. Um, on 196, you'll see the contaminated site management for $140,000 and that's transfer from uh, the Petro fund. On 198 is air appropriation increase uh, revenue that has been tracked all the time. 
Then on line 200 is the start of the revenues for the associated appropriations that I mentioned earlier. The air emissions permits modified of 140,000 starting in FY27. On line 202 is the cumulative impacts appropriation revenue for the associated environmental fund revenue of 2.5 million. And then the same thing for the Metro air toxic emissions reporting and rulemaking on line 203 of $1.4 million. And that is it for the Pollution Control Agency, Mr. Chair. I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Mueller. Mr. Mueller. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to start with the D, uh, Department of Natural Resources, starting on page 6. Um, the first lines 206 through 227 are just all the totals, uh, agency totals. And I'll start on line 232. This is the, the maintain current service levels for the DNR. It's largely at the level at the governor's budget. However, this uh, proposal reallocates some of that between some of the, the funds. Um, and I'll note those changes on line, uh, get my, yeah. Line 239, there will be no operating increase coming from the invasive species account. On line 242, there's additional part of the operating increase of 2.25 million will be coming out of the state parks account. Going to the next page, um, line 246, uh, an additional 1.25 million will be coming out of the lottery and lieu state parks account. And a lot of this is due to the lottery and lieu uh, percent changes that Mr. Hagemeyer mentioned um, that there's a, more money going into those accounts. So some of that money is going to help pay for the operating increase. Um, some of the bigger changes online in the game and fish fund on line 249, there's an additional 3.6 million coming from the heritage enhancement account of the operating increase as proposed by the governor. And then on line 250, there's 6.9 million less coming out of the game and fish fund than was proposed in the governor's and the house budget, most because the governor's and the house operating increase was dependent upon fish licensing increase. So that is not in the bill. So there's need to reallocate some of the operating increase to other accounts. So that's what happened on those lines. In the end, we get to the same operating increase as the, uh, that was in the governor's budget and the house budget. Uh, other general fund changes starting on line 257, 1.2 million for increase uh, mining capacity, regulatory capacity. Uh, line 258, uh, 2.85 million for uh, modernizing broadband for crossing public waters. Line 260 is $1.56 million for uh, carbon storage and peatlands. And I'll mention too, all these are one-time expenditures other than noted. There are only a couple of them that are ongoing, and I'll note those. Otherwise, everything is one-time. Um, 261, protecting water resources, 800,000. Uh, uh, 262, uh, $3 million for planting tomorrow's forest today. Line 263, accelerated tree collection, 800,000. Um, line 264, the relief program at 15.196 million. And then private landowner assistance for forestry on line 265 is 4.17 million. Um, Two million dollars for addressing state maintenance, uh, trail maintenance shortfall. No child left inside. One million dollars of general fund. There's some additional heritage enhancement money for that. Chronic wasting disease, this is one line of the this is part of the amount that was in the original governor's budget, $1.4 million. Enhancing grasslands, um, $10 million on line 270. Uh, 1.6 million for uh, CWD disease planning. And then on line 273 is the governor's proposal for uh, one-time money for aviation, 3.05 million. Uh, legal cost, 300000 This amount is also canceled in fiscal year 23 and reappropriated, so it's a net cost of zero. Um, modernizing digital or customer experience on line 275, $3.09 million. Stony Stonewort um, for 
Elk reintroduction, $2.3 million. The Rough Fish Report, $82,000. Farrell and Mink Report, $65,000. And then on line 281 is the package that was adopted here for the CWD oversight. Um, $3.9 million in fiscal year 24 and 25 and $1 million ongoing. There's also some money that was canceled in fiscal year 23 um, to help offset the cost of this. Going to the next page. Starting on line 290 is the uh, 1854 treaty um, payments. That's at three million per year, just for two years, so six million total. The Upper Sioux Agency Park Transfer five for five million. Red River Mediation, um, some one-time money to that program for 72,000. The 50-year clean water plan, 200,000. Invasive carp removal and surveys, 1.395 million. And invasive carp, 325,000. Um, extending a previous AIS uh, uh, appropriation, $40,000, and that amount will also cancel in fiscal year 23. There's a couple projects Starting on line 299, the Swing Bridge Trailhead Grant for 458, the Mississippi River Boat Launch at Dakota County, 1.2 million, um, $900,000 for an agency uh, in initiative for outreach. Then under Get Out More, the the carve outs that are here will be funded separately and not within the, the each of the the pools of money, but I'll mention that. Enhanced access for 225 million, and then the, the two separate, or the three carve outs that were in here will all be funded separately, but they're still just listed here for, um, because it's where they were originally, but Silver Bay Trailhead, 400,000, Redhead Mountain Bike Park, 500,000, the modernizing camping infrastructure for five million, modernizing boat accesses for 35 million, Crane Lake Campground for 1.9 million. Um, fish hatcheries and fishing infrastructure for 35 million. And then streams and modernizing uh, other water infrastructure for 10 million. So the total general fund appropriations to DNR increase is 240.726 million and 68.118 million in the tails. Under Natural Resources Fund, the first Two items are tied to the uh, boat fee increase. There's an increased spending from the water rec account of $12.48 million, and that's ongoing. Uh, increase to the county sheriff grants of $720,000, and that's ongoing. And promoting the water resources, um, this is not tied to the boat fee increase, but uh, water management account, $900,000. Um, the additional amount that goes out to the zoos for, through the lottery in lieu. Uh, for the Minnesota zoo, or for the non-Minnesota zoos are 260,000. And then local trail grants through the lottery in lieu, 320,000 increase. And then the two new lottery in lieu accounts. Um, so this is the start of the appropriating money for the two new accounts. The Greater Minnesota Parks and Trails it will start off at 400,000, then it'll go up to 600 ongoing. And then the outdoor recreation for underserved communities, the same, start off at 400,000 and then increase to 600 ongoing. The next line starting on 321 are the three ATV projects that were in the um, either House or Senate side. Voyager County for 750, Prospector Loop for 700, the Northwoods Regional ATV Trails for 500. Total additional spending out of the um, Natural Resources Fund is $32.4 million and 31.6 in the tails. Starting on page nine will be the increased amounts coming out of the Game and Fish Fund. These are all out of the Heritage Enhancement Account. No Child Left Inside, um, 500,000 per year ongoing. Native fish conservation, 134,000 per year ongoing. And then there's a neonicotinoid 
game species report or study for 737 one time. Uh, fish, there's a metro fish stocking initiative for 75,000. Uh, a one time increase in grants to the Minnesota Aquatic Eight Invasive Species Center, $2 million. And the shooting sports facility grants, um, $600,000. So additional amount out of the Game and Fish Fund, $27 million, $27.073 million and 25, um, in the lower 25 in the tails. Um, I'll note on under RIM, they're listed a little late. Under RIM, starting at 347, um, they'll be appropriating some money out of, uh, directing appropriations out of the RIM account, 800, for $8 million for wildlife management areas and $2.25 million per year ongoing, and then $6 million from the SNA, for the Great Clouds SNA. Other items of note here, there's just some transfers that happen. Um, line two, 356 is a $58,000 transfer from the water rec account to driver services to pay for the boat safety program in the bill, and the rest of the transfers are, are due to the operating increases. The new revenues I'll note on line 364 is the boat fee increase. That brings in $14.8 million. Um, protecting managing waters, that's a water fee for $3.4 million. And the updating utility license fees for crossing public waters is $15.2 million. On to the next page. Just a couple other items of note here. The, it, on lines 376 through 381 is the additional money coming in to the Game and Fish Fund due to the Pittman Robert, Robertson. This is federal money that would come into the Game and Fish Fund due to some of the spending in the bill. And Lastly, there's a line 38 is the modification to the turtle sellers modification, turtle sellers licensing that reduces game and fish money by 5,000 per year and the non-resident military spouse fishing license um, exemption is uh, carried on line 389. The, lotter the changes in lottery in lieu bring in the new percent to just above 82% of the money now goes into lottery and lieu accounts, plus the additional 3% for the two new accounts. <coughs> the additional money going into the new accounts is all noted on lines 397 through 403. And that's it for DNR. Mr. Hagemeyer. Mr. Chair, yep. I'll start with the border water and soil resources, starting on line 409. The first three are just the totals for the agency. Starting on line 115 are the changes. The maintain current service levels was included on line 416 at 559, the first biennium, and 740 in the tails. On line 417, you'll see the climate accelerated soil health practices for 21,114,000 one time. There's $3 million for the conservation reserve program state incentives. There's two million for the reinvest in Minnesota Rim Reserve program. On line 420 is climate adaptation, accelerated water storage and treatment of $17 million. Line 421 is the lawns to legumes program at $4 million. On line 422 is the habitat friendly utilities program of $1 million. Line 423 is habitat enhancement landscape program of $4 million. On line 4, 424, Private lands, grasslands, working land restoration easements of 20, is $21 million. Line 425 is the climate, private lands, peatland restoration for carbon sequestration at $9 million. Line 426 is the mitigation and resiliency for rim easements at $4 million. Line 427 is the support for a tribal liaison at uh, 265, the first biennium, and 288 in the tails. That one is one that has tails appropriation to it. On line 429 is $100,000 for the Area 2 Minnesota River Basin project. And then line 430 is $2.5 million for natural resources block grant increase. And I'll pass off to Mr. Mueller again. Um, Mr. Chair and members, starting on line 432 is a Met Council 
uh, Metro Parks. The change items start on line 437. Uh, Nine million one time for modernizing regional parks and trails. Line 438, six million one time for park trail maintenance. Line 440 is inflow and infiltration, uh, 2.75 million and that will, the language for that, you just adopted on the line one, or the 104, A104 amendment previously today. Next on line 442 is $2 million for the White Bear Lake uh, user group. And then $1 million on line 143 for the Emerald Ash Borer um, tree replacement. And then with the lottery and loot changes, um, there's an additional $1.5 million per year that will come out of the lottery and loot account. And then rounding off the last couple agencies here on page 12. Line 451, the conservation, Minnesota Conservation Corps, a $125,000 per year operating increase, and that's ongoing. Under Minnesota Zoo, starting on line, the changes start on line 462. The operating increase is at the governor and house level, uh, 6.16 million in fiscal year 24, or in the first biennium, and then the ongoing amount is 3.29 million ongoing operating increase. One time money, 850,000 for public safety and security systems. And then also on line 465, a lottery in lieu increase of 65,000 per year ongoing. Next we go to the Science Museum. Uh, operating increase on line 471, 302,000 in the first biennium and 362 in the second. And then one time, uh, $7 million for debt relief, employee retention, and temporary admission reduction. The last item here, or second to last, University of Minnesota. There are two appropriations here to the, directly to the University of Minnesota. Line 484 will be a lowland conifer reserve study for $500,000. And then a, a additional $1 million to the AI, AIS Center a $1 million um, general fund. And then the last item is the related to the appropriation to public safety coming from the special revenue account. And this deals with the uh, firefighter foam prohibition that uh, was in the bill, a policy that was in the bill. And that takes us through the end of the spreadsheet, Mr. Chairman. Members, any, any questions? Representative Jordan. Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions, but I would like to echo the thanks to all of our nonpartisan staff, particularly from the House, um, Ms. Janelle Taylor and Mr. Brad Hegemeyer. I'd also like to thank um, Peter Strohmeyer and yourself for all the work on this, along with their agencies. Um, I have reviewed this spreadsheet. Um, I think it is in good order. I think it is a strong policy and a strong spreadsheet that um, every member of this conference committee should be proud to vote for, and I would urge you all to do so. Any other questions? Before we vote, again, I want to direct staff to make sure there's any technical corrections, uh, advice, and Mr. Hagemeyer actually thinks he found a technical correction. So, Mr. Hagemeyer. Mr. Chair, and on line 331 is the neonicotinoid impacts on game species. I think the intent, and we may have already adopted it, was 767 and is listed as 737 here. The total appropriation was supposed to be 943. There's 176,000 out of LCCMR, so the intent was 767, and we may have already adopted that as a committee. Mr. Hagem, or Mr. Mueller, is that correct? And then uh, just, we had previously adopted a provision, I think it was yesterday, uh, where the, the shorthand adoption was we were referencing the uh, air toxics grants, and we referenced uh, two companies, and that was, uh, the intent was that it would be the communities that were involved in those settlement agreements, not those companies. So it was, those grants uh, were, are to be spent throughout the seven county metro area, and this would a way, be a way to ensure that there would be coverage in the east metro. So I uh, just wanted to correct that for the record in case anyone had any questions for that. And I heard, did you have a question on a, uh, a line? 
Mr. Chair, I, this is, I, I brought this up to Mr. Mueller, and it might be a, just, just a minor on the evasive card se section. There's, there's two line item, item, but that could be adjust to just one line item. And Mr. Mueller, head, head nod. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, and yes, the, the two line items, uh, try finding them here. On line 294 and 295, they're both dealing with invasive carp. And I think uh, in talking with the agency, they're just suggesting that we combine that into one appropriation with a little bit of flexibility for all the, for everything with that. So that we'll make that change when we, the drafting of the bill. Again, I want to express our appreciation uh, again to all of the staff members uh, this has been a very large undertaking. Thank you very much for all your work. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. The environment spreadsheet is adopted. You can clap if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so members, uh, that the environment portion is done. Uh, uh, but we are going to go into recess. Uh, I'd like to hear from the energy chairs as to the status of their uh, area. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we um, have a little bit of drafting yet to do on some policy language. We've done a great job of um, going through the, uh, most of the details and have um, pretty broad agreement. I think there's a couple of provisions yet we need to work on. And um, I think as far as the spreadsheet goes, we're in pretty good shape. But I think the desire has been to try and do it all in, at once. And so um, I will defer to my colleague, Senator Friends. Senator Friends. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, I agree entirely. We have a spreadsheet that, as best we can tell, is fully agreed to. We have a couple of policy things that we're still waiting for. And I've just communicated with the chair. I think we're hoping to see some proposed language or something soon. Um, I, I guess I don't know exactly what the timing is, but um, progress has been made, but spreadsheet seems to be agreed to, and 80% of the policy stuff that wasn't already completed, I think is agreed to. So that's as close as I can call it at this point. Um, would there be the opportunity to adopt the spreadsheet? I think we'd much prefer, given some of the budget items and how they relate to the policy that isn't agreed to, to wait and I think we're also being advised that that's probably the more cautious way. Um, we need a, to do one more formal adoption. We adopted the spreadsheet, but uh, Ms. Taylor. Mr. Chair and members, uh, I believe we have not adopted the upper Sioux language, the, policy, the house language. And I believe the desire is to adopt the house language if you want to direct, direct us to also include that. Representative Jordan. Mr. Chair, I would move the house language as it relates to the upper Sioux agency. Um, and I would ask members to uh, support us with this motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. House language is adopted. Any other, any other items? So uh, we are in recess. <laughs>